Hi everyone, Mike here from Bikes by Mike with another cycling related video. Today I'm going to guide you through the process I follow for one of the most common and most important bike maintenance tasks, replacing a worn chain. Okay, let's get to it. There are a few important steps in keeping the chain part of your drivetrain running smoothly and getting the most life out of it. I'll cover each of these in the seven part video. I'll first show you how to test your chain to see if it needs replacing. Next, I'll show you how to remove your old chain, then a section on how to choose and size your new chain, a section on how to prepare your chain for installation, then how to install it, which types of chain lubes you should consider and how to apply them correctly. And lastly, I'll give you a few tips on how to extend the life of your chain and keep it running smoothly. I'm going to show you the process of replacing a chain using my single speed commuter bike but the process is exactly the same regardless of the type of bike or drivetrain. The only difference is the type of chain and length of chain you need to use. Both are determined by the type of drivetrain, which I'll explain later on. Let's get started with the tools and parts you'll need for the job. Rubber gloves, a chain checker tool, such as this one by Park Tool, master link remover pliers, this one also by Park Tool, a chain cutter breaker tool to remove chain pins and cut your chain to size, a replacement chain, which for me is a SRAM PC1 single speed chain. I suggest that regardless of whatever chain you buy, you get one that comes with a master link type connector, which makes installing or removing the chain easier. Shop towels or rags, a container filled with mineral spirits or some type of chain specific stripper, a second container filled with isopropyl alcohol, Chain lube of your choice, but preferably a wax-based lube. I'm using Silka Super Secret Chain Lube. Lastly, a chain hook. This one is optional, but does make the process a little easier. The first thing you want to do before replacing your chain is, of course, figuring out if your chain needs replacing. If you haven't already watched my video on how to check for chain wear, I suggest you give it a view as I'm only covering the basics here. Let's look at the two most common chain brands to see when they suggest you replace a worn chain. We'll start with the best, Shimano, of course. They have a general recommendation to replace the chain every 2,000 miles or 3,200 kilometers. This is a crude guideline which I don't recommend you follow as chains wear at massively different rates. Wear rate is impacted by several factors. The quality of the chain, how much power you put through the chain, riding conditions, and the type of lube used. You can easily get five times more life by using a high performance lube on a well-maintained chain as compared to one that is poorly lubed. But Shimano's second recommendation to replace the chain when it shows more than 0.5% of wear is a good guideline to follow. SRAM's advice is clear cut. Replace the chain when it reaches 0.8% of wear. The common wisdom among bike experts is that the amount of allowable wear or stretch on a chain is inversely related to the number of gears you have. So 11 speed up chains need to be replaced with just 0.5% of wear. 10 speed and below chains at 0.75% and single speeds like my bike, 1% of wear. For all the reasons I mentioned in my earlier video, I strongly advise that you replace your chain at no more than 0.5% of wear, regardless of the number of gears you have. When I drop my chain checker onto my chain using the side that measures 0.75% of wear, it does not drop in between the rollers. So I know the level of wear is somewhere less than 0.75%. But when I turn the tool over for a 0.5% wear measurement, it has partially but not fully dropped between the rollers, indicating that it's close to 0.5% of wear. I could let it go longer, but then I wouldn't be able to do this video. Removing your chain is a simple process, but only with the right tools. There are no shortcut hacks here. There are two ways to remove a chain. The method you use depends on the type of chain you have on your bike. Most chains sold today have a single removable master link that is removed with a chain link remover tool. There are two ways to remove a chain. The method you use depends on the type of chain you have on your bike. Most chains sold today have a single removable master link that is removed with a chain link remover tool. Older chains use a joining pin instead of a master link to connect the chain. Here you need to use a chain cutter tool to break the chain. So regardless of the method you use, you will need a special tool for this job. The most common master links are sold by Shimano and SRAM, but there are many others. 
Shimano's version is called a quick link, while SRAM has two versions, the power lock and power link. Two important things to remember about all master links. First, most of them are not reusable. In the case of Shimano and SRAM, neither quick links or power locks can be used more than once. However, SRAM's power link is reusable. The second thing to know is that these removable links are both brand specific and gear specific. So you need to pick the one that matches the gearing and the brand of chain used on your bike. For me as an example, I have a lot of Shimano 11 speed quick links from my previous 11 speed bike, but I had to buy all new 12 speed quick links to match the chain I'm now running on my 12 speed DI2. To remove a chain with a removable link, simply insert the master link remover pliers on the outside of each of the two master link rollers and squeeze the pliers to disconnect the master link pins. You can now remove the master link as well as the chain. If removing an older style chain that uses a joining pin instead of the master link, you need to use the chain breaker tool. I'll demonstrate on my single speed. Firmly seat one link of your chain into the tool. Slowly screw in the tool pin, making sure it is lined with the center of your chain pin. Continue to screw in the tool until the chain pin is pushed out far enough to separate the chain. When choosing a new chain, you have a lot of options available at different price points. You can easily pay over $100 Canadian for a top of the line chain. But as little as $18, like what I paid for the SRAM single speed chain that I'm putting on my bike. There is rarely a performance difference between an expensive chain and a cheaper one. You're paying for the marginal weight savings. And I don't care about saving a few grams on my clunky commuter bike, so I always go with the least expensive chain option. But it is important to choose a replacement chain that is compatible with the gearing used on your bike. If you're running a 12 speed drivetrain, you must use a 12 speed chain. Don't try using an 11 speed chain as it simply won't perform as well. Part of the reason I chose PC1 chain is that it's made specifically for single speed bikes. Whatever chain you buy, I suggest you get a master link variety and not the older styles that use a joining pin. Chains with master links are just much easier to install. And I'm not going to explain the joining pin installation process here. So there. Unless you're installing a new drivetrain on your bike, you won't need to figure out the correct size of chain required. Just use your current chain to size up your new one. If you do need to figure out the required length for your chain, I've included a link below to the bettershifting.com website, which explains how to calculate chain length for a variety of different drivetrains. Lay your new chain next to your old one, making sure that all the links are perfectly lined up. When you are sure they're lined up, mark the location of the pin you want to remove. Remember that you'll be adding a master link to your new chain, so if your old chain isn't the master link variety, you need to take this into consideration when measuring your new chain. I point the extra link upwards to remind me. Grab your chain breaker and cut the chain to the appropriate size. You can throw away the excess piece. Now we need to prep the chain prior to installation. Regardless of whatever type of lube you're using, I recommend you strip the factory lube off the chain before installing the new chain and applying lube. While some people believe leaving the factory lube on is just fine, I don't agree. And neither does zero friction cycling, which is widely respected resource for all things related to drivetrain efficiency. If you think we are wrong, leave a comment below. The factory lube that comes on most chains is very thick and tacky and difficult to remove. So better deal with it now rather than later when the chain is mounted on your bike. And if you're applying any of the wax-based lubes, you must start with the chain completely stripped of factory lube. Properly prepping your chain is a two-step process. Step one is to remove the factory lube. Grab a container filled with mineral spirits. While not the most environmentally friendly option as it must be disposed of as hazardous waste, it is arguably the best. And remember, even biodegradable options like Silka's chain stripper becomes hazardous waste after use as all the toxic factory lube is now in the liquid. So it still must be disposed of properly. Drop your chain and master link into the container and let it soak for 15 minutes before moving on to the next step. After the 15 minute bath, shake the chain in the container for two minutes. 
Yes, the best way is to move the chain in two separate baths of mineral spirits, but I avoid these extra steps as I don't want three containers of toxic liquid lying around my house. Plus, you can keep your single bath of mineral spirits relatively clean by occasionally running it through a few layers of coffee filters. Next, lift the chain and the master link out of the container and wipe it dry with a shop towel. Step two is removing any film left behind in step one. This step is particularly important if you're using a wax-based lube to ensure the wax adheres to the chain metal. Grab a second container filled with isopropyl alcohol and insert your chain and master link. Give it a good shake for about two minutes. Once done, lift the chain and master link out of the bath and wipe it dry as best as possible. The chain should now be entirely stripped of factory lube and look very clean. You won't be able to fully dry it as moisture will be caught in between the pins and rollers, so just let it air dry for a few hours. Alcohol evaporates quickly, so it won't take too long. Don't let a strip chain sit for more than 12 hours as it will begin to rust. Now that our chain is prepped, we can install it on our bike before we apply the lube. The only exception is if you're using a hot wax immersion type lubricant where application is done with the chain off the bike. Fish the chain around the rear cassette and derailleur, if you have one, as well as the front chain ring with both open ends of the chain dangling at the bottom. Make sure that if you're installing a directional chain that is facing the right way. How do you know if a chain is directional? Well, if you have a Shimano chain, chances are that it is directional. If you have a SRAM chain, most likely it is not. Directional chains will have some kind of marking on them to indicate direction, typically an arrow, or the system used by Shimano where printed text is on the side of the chain that faces outwards, and nothing printed on the chain facing the inside of the bike. My chain is not directional. If you have a chain holder, hook it on opposite ends of the chain on the top side with enough slack to work on the master link. Most master links are directional, so make sure to install it correctly. The curved side of the master link will always be the side that touches the gears. Make sure both sides of the master link are fully pressed together and the pin on each side is engaged. SRAM's single speed master link is different than most others in that it is installed entirely by hand. You just bend the chain while squeezing the link and it will lock into place. But you won't find this type of link on chains for geared bikes, so I'll show you the process using the standard technique using SRAM's PowerLock Master Link. Slip both sides of the Master Link onto your chain, making sure it's installed in the proper direction. Next, grab the chain link remover pliers and insert each end on either side of the Master Link and pull the handles outward to lock the Master Link in place. If not using chain link remover pliers, carefully rotate the Master Link backwards until it's located just behind the chain ring. Now, while holding the rear wheel firmly, put pressure on the pedal to snap the master link in place. Rotate your cranks a few times to make sure the chain is running smoothly. Now let's apply the lube to our nice new chain. There are three major categories of chain lubes to choose from. You have wet lubes such as muck off wet lube, finish line wet, and rock and roll gold. Wet lubes work well in a variety of conditions, last quite a long time, and are particularly good in wet conditions. One of the best wet lubes I've used is Pro-X by Demonde Tech. The next category is dry lubes, like Finish Line Dry, Pedro's X-Dry, and White Lining Clean Ride. As the name suggests, they are light duty lubes that are meant for use in dry conditions. But since they go on lightly, they tend not to collect as much dirt as wet lubes and can be reapplied many times before a full cleaning. I do not recommend using dry lubes as they simply do not perform as well as the other two types. And since they are not as good at reducing friction, you won't get as much life out of your chain. The last category is wax-based lubes. Here you have the hot melt wax varieties where the wax needs to be heated and the entire chain soaked in the liquid. One good option is Silka Secret Chain Blend. But you can also buy wax drip varieties like Ceramic Speed UFO Drip Lube or Wend Wax On Liquid Lube. These are much easier to apply and if done correctly will allow you to achieve close to 95% of the efficiency benefits of immersion-based wax lubes. 
My own personal favorite is Silka Super Secret Chain Lube, which I'll be using here. Silk, Silka, Silk, Silka Super Secret Chain, who named that? As a whole, wax-based lubes add the least amount of drag to a chain, collect no dirt, and extend the life of your chain. When you apply lube to a chain, you want your gearing in a cross-chain configuration to slightly bend the chain laterally, which will provide a slightly larger gap between the links and the rollers to allow the lube to penetrate better. With the 2 by setup, that would be the largest chain ring in the front and say the second cog from the top on the rear cassette. Since I'm working with a single speed here, I can't do the cross-chaining trick. Give the wax lube a very good shake before applying. Then add one drop of lube to each chain link roller right here while pedaling backwards. Best to start at the master link so you know when you have done the whole chain. When done, pinch the rollers between your fingers and then complete three or four revolutions of the chain. Let the chain dry overnight before using it. To allow the lube to penetrate as best as possible, it is a good idea to reapply the lube one more time before riding. You can also get additional penetration by reapplying the lube after your first ride. Now to the final part of this video, which is my top tips on getting the most out of your chain. First, if you followed my steps on how to prep your chain before using it, then already your chain is going to run better and last longer than a chain that is right out of the box. Second, reapply your lube as required. For wax-based lube, it's easy to tell when they need to be topped up. You will hear that the chain becomes noticeably noisier. I typically get at least 500 kilometers on my road bike using Silka Super Secret Chain Lube before having to reapply. Third, clean your chain every four or five rides or so. Because wax-based lubes don't attract dirt, no degreaser is needed. All you have to do is cycle the chain through microfiber cloth. That's it. If you want to clean the chain even better, spray cleaner on the microfiber cloth and repeat the process. But only use one that won't attack wax, such as Silka's Biodegreaser or Silka Ultimate Brake and Drivetrain Cleaner. Okay, I know what you're thinking. This guy is pushing Silka products a lot, so he must be sponsored by them. Actually, I'm not. I'm not sponsored by them. I don't make money from them. I don't get discounts on their products. I pay what you pay for their products. I just use them because they work really well. That's it. So that is pretty much it for how to install a new chain on your bike and to keep it running smoothly. Let me know in the comment section what you think about my technique and my choice of lube. That's all I got for today, folks. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe as it allows me to produce more content for all of you. See you next time. Happy rolling.